I'm with the Unwanted Horse Coalition, and as Dr. Lund said, we started in 2006 um, with the purpose of getting organizations to work together regardless of viewpoints and uh, just taking viewpoints off the table um, and getting the discussion of unwanted horses started. Um, we currently have 32 members ranging from breed organizations to rescues, AAEP is a member, the Jockey Club, we have state horse councils. Uh, at the time the coalition was formed, we had four major goals in mind, uh, to educate the industry about unwanted horses, to reduce the number of unwanted horses, to educate um, and find ways to solve the problem of unwanted horses. In recent years, we've become a little bit more hands-on with the issue. Uh, we've created some programs, partnered up with some organizations to uh, start some programs. So we've kind of moved forward um, from these four goals to become a little bit more hands-on. Today, the mission of the Unwanted Horse Coalition is to reduce the number of unwanted horses and improve their welfare through education and the efforts of organizations committed to the health, safety, and responsible care and disposition of these horses. We have a few educational materials ranging from brochures to flyers. Uh, our main uh, brochure just educates people about what our, the Unwanted Horse Coalition does, our mission, uh, what um, organizations are members of the Unwanted Horse Coalition. Uh, we have plenty of these available, so if anyone needs any brochures for meetings, we're always sending these out. Um, they're free of charge. Uh, all of our materials are available for download on our website. Um, but if anyone ever needs any materials, please feel free to contact me or give me a call. Uh, our 2009 Unwanted Horses Survey is a fantastic source of information. Um, we surveyed 27,000 horse owners, stakeholders, rescue and retirement facilities. Dr. Lenz had a bunch of information from our survey in his presentation. Uh, it gave us a lot of information that we use today um, regarding um, solutions uh, and uh, the importance of uh, the unwanted horse issue, uh, the causes, solutions, and effects. And that survey is available on our website if anyone is interested in uh, viewing the results of that. Um, Uh, we have our handbook, Best Practices, uh, which details the initiatives that organizations can take uh, to help reduce the number of unwanted horses, uh, ranging from uh, putting uh, an unwanted horse coordinator uh, within your organization. I know many people are busy, um, so just finding one person within the organization that might have time to uh, think about the issue of unwanted horses, um, to... Uh, putting together an, uh, a castration clinic to uh, putting together a grant program dedicated to the unwanted horse issue. Uh, this handbook has all kinds of ideas for uh, individuals and organizations. Uh, we have our Rehabilitating the Neglected Horse, a Caregiver's Guide, which is a brochure covering basic care for rehabilitating the neglected horse from failure care to nutrition and uh, basic vet care, and our own responsibly handbook, which uh, includes chapters on basic horse ownership and nutrition and um, also gives uh, ideas for what you can do if you can no longer take care of your horse. Um, this is a great guide for first-time horse owners um, thinking about buying or Take, uh, getting their first horse. <laughs> so we have that on our website, uh, and it's a great tool for, for anyone. Our website is a great source of information. Uh, we're constantly updating it. We have over 700 facilities that will take in a horse. So I get emails every day from people that uh, I can't take care of my 20-year-old horse 
anymore. Um, I've had them for 15 years, and um, what should I do? So I have 700 facilities. Um, they're listed by state, and I can point them to that section on our website and say, here, here are 700 facilities that will take in a horse, and that, that number is growing by the day. So um, that's a great source of information. We have information about our Operation Gelding program, which I will get into in a minute, uh, information about responsible ownership. Uh, all of our uh, materials are on there. Uh, all of our press releases are on there. Uh, list of all of our members, as well as links to their website, are on there. Um, and we also have a link to uh, our additional assistance section, which links to hay banks, feed banks, um, castration programs that are available, um, euthanasia programs, any kind of grant program that might be available, um, uh, equine welfare grant program. So if I have a horse owner in need that may contact me and say, I, a rescue that says we need money for our rescue, um, we're really in dire straits right now, I can point them to this section on our website and say we have a list of 20 equine welfare grant programs. The AEP has a grant program and they can, they can go to that section of our website or if someone says I really need hay for my, for my three horses, I can't afford hay, they, there's about six to ten links on our website for, for hay, hay banks and feed programs. Uh, we have links to full circle programs for um, AQHA has a full circle program. The Morgans now have a full circle program. Those are all links for owners, um, which is a great source of information. Um, we have a speaker program that we started, um, when I'd say around 2007. Um, we have sent over 55 representatives to events around the country to speak on behalf of the Unwanted Horse Coalition, teach them about unwanted horses, the issue of unwanted horses, own responsibly, um, equine welfare. We have about 125 speakers in our database, um, so it's really important to educate people about unwanted horses and, and the issues and, and the solutions. We have our Media Roundup, which is the Unwanted Horse Coalition's online newsletter. We have about 4,500 people on our distribution list, and we've sent out over 40 editions to date. And it's just our way of letting people know what's going on in the industry about unwanted horses, what the Unwanted Horse Coalition is doing. So anyone would like to be added to that uh, newsletter, I'd be happy to add you. Just find me after this, and I will add you to our distribution list. We have uh, teamed up with the Equine Network to distrib uh, distribute this book, How to Start and Run a Rescue, with the, uh, with the data that we found in our uh, 2009, how to, um, uh, 2009 survey. We found that many of our nation's rescues really needed some help. They needed to become better businesses. They needed to take, be able to take in more horses. There just wasn't enough room for the amount of unwanted horses we had. The rescues weren't getting enough funding. Um, so we found that if we had a resource for those rescues to become better businesses, to be able to take in more horses, then it, it just we'd be able to help more horses. So we teamed up with the Equine Network to distribute this book, How to Start and Run a Rescue, and it's really a great source of information for our rescues, um, how to become a nonprofit, how to get a great board of directors, how to be more organized, how to adopt out more horses. It's just a great source of information. So we started to distribute this book to some rescues. We've sold more than a hundred and every dollar that we make from this book goes to our Operation Gelding Grant program. 
Oh, here's our the information. It's it's written by Dr. Jennifer Williams. She has two successful rescues, Blue Bonnet Equine Rescue and Lone Star Equine Rescue. It's an indispensable resource for those looking to start a rescue or establish rescues looking to improve their business. And the topics are how to start a nonprofit, uh, fundraising, recruiting and retaining volunteers, bookkeeping, public relations, networking, things like that. We have 250 books. Like I said, we've sold uh, over 100 so far. And so far, we've donated $1,659.34 to Operation Gelding, and, and we've also helped countless rescues by doing so. We have our Operation Gelding program, which we started in 2010 with the help of uh, very generous donations from the AAEP, Pfizer, and also a donation from the Unwanted Horse Coalition. It provides funds and materials to assist organizations, associations, and events that want to host uh, a successful castration clinic. We offer $50 per horse with a maximum of $1,000 uh, per clinic. Um, we, what we do is we uh, give all the materials needed to to the organizations that want to host a clinic, um, all the paperwork needed for the attendees and, um, and everything that they need from start to finish. Any organization, association, or event can participate. To date, we have aided in the castration of 684 stallions and donated over $34,000 in seed money. We've also partnered with the Equine Network to launch the program A Home for Every Horse. It's a program that consists of a universal website where rescues can list their horses available for adoption. We've found that it would just be so much easier if um, there was one website to list all of the horses available for adoption instead of someone going to individual rescues websites to look for horses available for adoption just be so much easier if there was just one website where someone can say, I'd like to adopt a horse that could be a good fox hunter and could be good for kids. So we have one website where any rescue can list their horse and it's free for them to do so. Um, although they do have to be a 501c3, it can't just be anyone. We have had to regulate it somehow. Right now we have more than 500 adoptable horses listed on the site and there have been more than 1,600 horses listed since we started. There are more than 400 rescues uh, participating on the site and we have some incredible sponsors, Purina, Tractor Supply, Weather Beta, and the BLM. We, um, along with our, part, our sponsor Purina, we have uh, been able to donate, um, I think it was $125,000, uh, $125,000 worth of free feed last year to all the rescues participating. And this year they're going to be donating up to $150,000 worth of free Purina feed to participating rescues. So if you know of a, re a 501c3 rescue that is not a part of the program, encourage them to sign up and they will get free feed for their rescue. So what can you do to help an organization or uh, an individual? You can designate an unwanted horse coordinator, a person within your organization that's responsible for just thinking about the issue. If we get each organization just has one person to think about the issue, it would make, it would make a huge difference. We can distribute materials to educate people about the issue of unwanted horses. You can join the media roundup to keep up to date about what is going on within the industry related to unwanted horses. Uh, become a UHC ambassador or a speaker. Uh, include a section on your website dedicated to unwanted horses, a link to the Unwanted Horse Coalition website, or um, just information about owning responsibly. 
educate new owners about the responsibility of owning a horse, uh, perhaps um, some materials um, at your business uh, about owning responsibly. Um, breed organizations can start a full circle program. Um, the American Quarter Horse Association, uh, I believe, was the first organization to start that. Um, what it is is that you can mark down on the horse's um, registration papers um, the owner, someone that has owned the horse, um, can mark down on the horse's registration papers that they will um, assist in the horse uh, if it ever becomes unwanted or someone uh, that they will help aid in the care for the horse, either by providing money or providing a home or um, et cetera. Um, and uh, many other breed associations have adopted that as well, such as the United States Trotting Association and the uh, Morgans and the Jockey Club as well. You can support, start, or associate with a care facility. The 2009 Unwanted Horses Survey found that many respondents felt that increasing the ability of a rescue facility for horses was very critical. You can volunteer, donate, or promote adoption. Uh, if you have the means, you can start your own facility. You can provide direct help to horse owners and care facilities in need. Uh, um, the Unwanted Horse Veterinary Relief uh, Campaign is a great vaccination program. Um, you can start a grant program, uh, start a hay bank or feed bank, a castration clinic, a euthanasia fund, an equine safety net, anything helps. Um, we have some examples in our best practices handbook. Um, fundraising, there's many ways to fundraise for your organization. Uh, silent auction, uh, selling merchandise, raising money at an event, uh, raffles, uh, benefit shows or trail rides, a shopping site that will donate a portion of your sales, a, a PayPal link on your site, in-kind donation, and applying for grants. Don't rely on someone else to get involved. You have to start yourself to make a difference.